every morning in the Bodha district of Kathmandu, a pilgrimage around this holy site, the stupa. It is a daily ritual that may look ordinary, but for Tibetans who have been living as refugees in Nepal, it's one thing they could do without fear of getting arrested. We managed to speak to a man who asked us to conceal his identity. He came to Nepal as a teenager after the first wave of Tibetans had arrived in 1959, when then King Mahendra opened its borders to those fleeing the Chinese occupation of Tibet. In your homeland, are you allowed to practice your religion? I'm not able to comment on that. In August 2008, Nepali police detained 760 Tibetans for protesting against the crackdown in Tibet by Chinese authorities. In 2019, dozens were also arrested in the days leading up to Chinese President Xi Jinping's visit to Nepal. Since then, Chinese ministers have also visited. A visit by a Chinese minister to Kathmandu would have triggered protests amongst the Tibetans in the past, but these refugees now live in fear. They've become quiet and inaccessible. Rights activists say Chinese officials have been the subject of protests because of violations of Tibetans' rights. But the Tibetan refugee we spoke to wouldn't even elaborate on why he left his homeland. The reason that people come here from Tibet is obvious. I can't talk about it. The Nepali government has repeatedly stated it adheres to a one-China policy. Its National Human Rights Commission says freedom of political expression is outside its mandate. I think that is the political related questions, uh, relation between the China and Nepal. Uh, what political situation and what, what, what is the standard of government of Nepal? But Tibetan refugees say there is a much more urgent and pressing concern. Their children are growing up stateless. You can borrow or beg for money, but you can do that for identity papers. Expressions of his Tibetan identity adorn his home, but he worries his children won't even have a place to call home. Barnabilo Al Jazeera, Kathmandu.